I am excited to announce the gentlemen of Stanford Productions and I are beginning a new podcast called The Handmaiden of the Home. Welcome back to the Stan Firm Project. I'm Sarah Merck. I am a wife to my future doc of a husband, Mason, and a mother to my beautiful, wild, crazy, ringbunctious boys, Fulton John, Peter Daniel, and George Joseph. And I'm happy to be the first female guest here on the Stan Firm Project. Family life and motherhood. We could sit and dive into this topic for quite some time. I'll start by sharing this quote I had read from a Hungarian cardinal that goes as such. The most important person on earth is a mother. She cannot claim the honor of having built Notre Dame Cathedral. She need not. She has built something more magnificent than any cathedral, a dwelling for an immortal soul, the tiny perfection of her baby's body. The angels have not been blessed with such a grace. They cannot share in God's creative miracle to bring new saints to heaven. Only a human mother can. Mothers are closer to God the creator than any other creature. God joined forces with mothers in performing this act of creation. What on God's good earth is more glorious than this, to be a mother? Motherhood is one of the very few things that truly take you out of yourself. Think about the journey of motherhood for a moment. As a little life is conceived in your very womb because love, by its nature, bears fruit. As a pregnant mother sustains, carries, and nurtures that little life in her womb, her body is not her own anymore. I mean, it never really was in the first place, right? She is physically being stretched as her heart grows with the love of that child. She quite literally becomes a vessel for the Lord. You mothers know very, very well that you may not be able to hear or see your little one, but you know them in such an intimate way like no other creature does. I also urge us to stop saying to pregnant first-time mothers that they are mothers to be, You don't look down upon your womb at your beloved child and say, I am your mother-to-be. No, rather, I am your mother. Just as Elizabeth said to Mary at the visitation, most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? the sacrifice, the love, the joy, the hardships that come from the vocation of a wife and a mother are stretching, molding, and constructing you into who the Lord has so desperately called you to be because we can't do it on our own. Heck, even Jesus didn't carry his own cross. We are called to fellowship amidst our vocation. It is no small feat. It takes rolling up your sleeves and diving first into trusting the Lord will provide the sufficient grace. And can I tell you a little secret? He always provides the grace for that very season. His grace is far deeper and wider beyond our own comprehension. And I know I've needed it many of times. I joke all the time that my children humble me, but in all seriousness, They truly do. They show me all the beautiful and the broken parts of who I am. And quite frankly, I'm always astonished and blown away by how much those little innocent beings reveal to me about Christ and the love he has for each and every one of us and his bride, the church. Ladies, whether you're in the vocation of motherhood or in a season of preparation or anticipation for it, I urge you to look towards the example of our lovely lady dressed in blue, our blessed mother, because subconsciously, every woman desires to be like her. She has this way of softening our hearts, even the most hardened ones, as she wraps you in her mantle so closely to her immaculate heart. Take a moment and envision our lady holding Jesus so closely to her heart, 
As our heartbeats begin to sink, she takes her mantle and wraps it around his little features to keep him warm and safe. She too will run to the aid of her children, and as she always does, and believe it or not, those children are, are you and I, as Christ gave her to us at the foot of the cross. What a gift. This image always reminds me of the safest places is in the arms of our mothers and our father. Just like that, we desire the utmost good for our children, eternal life, as does Christ and his church. The church gives us so many beautiful aids, whether it be the saints, his word, the sacraments, or others to help us along the way. So we ought to utilize them. And that leads me to my last thing. I'm excited to announce the gentlemen of Stanford Productions and I are beginning a new podcast called The Handmaiden of the Home where we talk about all things marriage and family life. In every episode, a new co-host joins me as we sit down and chat about living an authentic, joyful life in the vocation of marriage. That life towards sainthood is actually quite freeing, and it's something attainable for you and I as we live out our vocation of marriage while raising tiny saints in the training. So stay tuned for a sneak peek of Handmaiden of the Home. And so I, it's something that I really knew inside my head, but I didn't really like experience it right. in the fullness that mm-hmm. I had in, in motherhood of completely laying down my life for my child and completely yeah. dying to myself at two in the morning okay. every single night, you know. And um, yeah, it's a really like challenging call to be able to like practice that virtue of um, making your life a gift but it's also um, a really beautiful call to be able to be Christ and imitate Christ in the laying down of life for your children absolutely I always halfway joke I'm like my I like say to people like yeah my kids humble me all the time like no they seriously your kid I could go on forever about this but it's one of those things where kids are imitators, right? Like they see so much about how does mom or dad handle, handle this or the way they uphold themselves or what they say. And, and like, I think it's important of truly practicing, right? Your faith in, within your vocation, especially your children. Cause they, they're like little minds are like sponges, like soak up everything. And I joke of like, my kids show me the broken parts of who I am, but that is so beautiful. Like Venerable Fulton, she always says like, sometimes the way the good Lord gets to the hearts of those is by breaking them. And I think that's like been a beautiful realization within motherhood of, wow, I need a, I feel like in a lot of ways, the mother sets the tone for the household, right? Like, and if you, um, this transition is hard or you're like maybe letting it fester up to resentment or whatever it may be, or just frustration, it can set that tone for your kids and your spouse to come into what regardless you know whether you are home with your kids you're not home with your kids what have you um i think is a big thing as well on top of that but yeah